Yo, what up Street Togs, Eric Kim. So, a thought. What is the point of humans? What is the point of being alive and so forth? So, one of the, the things I think a lot about is, you know, what is the point of humanity? Why are we alive? And actually one of the, the reasons I'd like to look at plants and nature and stuff like that is, it kind of realizes that how small and insignificant we are and how for the most part reality doesn't care for our own personal life and stuff like that but you know all life is all life so even right now it's really nice we're seeing new buds we're seeing new signs of growth and life it's currently here it's currently spring here in providence rhode island And no matter how tough things are, looks like life keeps on living. So to me, it's actually really nice for me to see all this uh, new life and growth. I'm just kind of realizing that honestly, everything's gonna, everything's gonna be all right. And we humans, we're far more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. So like even think about trees, right? Look how resilient they are, right? Like they're starting from growing here. They grow upwards. And then look at how they twist and stuff like that to just kind of keep growing. And you know, it just keeps growing higher because it wants to get more nutrients and life and stuff like that and so it seems like us humans too like the basic thing is the most important thing for us humans and other biological creatures is for us to get food you know obviously water um but actually i would say probably food is probably more important in the sense that like even a lot of the foods we eat like spinach and stuff like that already has water in it so ultimately we humans want food and ideally we want more food and we want to kind of continue to propagate our genes and we want to continue to spread ourselves so kind of like in the matrix you remember when agent smith is talking to morpheus he's like dude you humans you guys are actually the ultimate virus you guys are the problem on planet earth and i mean i think that's kind of true in the sense that you know humanity is about extracting resources for our maximal benefit and obviously you know on this Buckminster Fuller spaceship Earth, we don't want to die. And we want to preserve the ecology and the planet for future generations to enjoy it. it seems pretty obvious. Um, but it does seem that like human nature is about maximal extraction of resources and to best, you know, become more powerful and extend our power towards uh, other means. So the way I think about this in practical terms is, you know, thinking that we humans were not these super benevolent souls which happen to inhabit the earth. No, we're, we're the apex predator. But I'm also kind of uh, hopeful and optimistic where I almost feel like we humans we don't give nature and the planet enough credit. I mean, obviously we humans, we got like nukes and stuff which could totally destroy the planet. But for the most part, like, I don't know, I think planet Earth is actually much more resilient than we give her credit for. And and actually, what might even think too is that like, it's pretty egotistical that we humans think that we are even strong enough to destroy the planet, even if we tried via just purely through pollution and stuff like that. Because I think, uh, if we think about this like kind of like post-apocalyptic vision of the future, I mean, uh, worst case scenario, we're all like kind of in bunkers under the planet or starting some sort of sea colony. But humans, once again, we're so resilient, we're gonna find a way to survive. Or whether we start a space colony or live in, you know, kind of Elysium status. I, I almost feel like actually the, mu the movie uh, Elysium with, um, what's his face? 
uh, Matt Damon is probably one of the most accurate depiction of what's probably gonna happen in the future. You know, shout out to my buddy uh, Bill Block who produced the film. So, it's a great film too because I think the biggest issue that we're dealing with in uh, society is kind of this battle between the haves and the have-nots. So, the those who are rich and powerful and stuff like that, they're, 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 they're gonna be okay. They're gonna have enough resources to do anything they essentially want. Whereas, peoples who's, you know, poor, I mean, they're still gonna probably survive for the most part, but have a very poor quality of uh, life. And then also just thinking about the whole like notions of quality of life argument. What is the point of having a good quality of life? Like, I don't think it's a passive thing. Like it shouldn't be, you know, I'm entitled to have a high quality of life, but no, it's just, just thinking to yourself, what kind of life do I want and how am I gonna use my personal powers to direct myself to some sort of aims. So one of the benefits right now of COVID Starting to discover all these new nature pets. Yeah, there's something super zen about uh, being out in nature. So. You know, life is cruel, life it's not, nothing's granted. The only thing is certain is uh, our death and we don't know when it's gonna happen. And so, in so far much, I guess within legal bounds, take all the personal risks that you could take. Um, think of your life as a personal experiment or a tool to create art, to philosophize, to challenge pre-existing notions to falsify what you consider misguided notions and devote your life towards uh, greater aims than yourself but also while we're playing this fun game don't forget to augment yourself as well We'll check out the fractal Fibonacci on that one. <laughs> 